I love video games, you love video games. Unless you don't, in which case I still love video games. Today, I'm going to play a video game I've never played before. Then I'm going to nitpick it to death. Welcome to New Game Fuss. So, after my first episode, uh, some of my viewers uh, asked if they could participate in choosing the next game I'd look at for this show. And I said, sure. So I picked a few titles off of my shelf of unplayed games, and I ran a Twitter poll. And so, the winner is Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age. So, I'm really excited for this one. I love RPGs, and Dragon Quest is my favorite RPG of all RPGs. Um, I started with uh, the, the first one back on the NES, although it was called Dragon Warrior back then. Uh, played one, played two, played three, played four, and then they moved to the PlayStation where I couldn't play them because I didn't have one. Um, I did eventually play Dragon Quest VIII on the PlayStation 2 and quite liked that one. I played Dragon Quest IX on the DS and I just really did not want to play it on a handheld, on a tiny, teeny little screen. I just wanted to play it on my TV. I still dumped about 30 hours into the game. It wasn't a bad game by any means, I just really did not want to play it on a handheld, so I never finished it. Uh, Dragon Quest X was an MMO, and those are not for me. Uh, but Dragon Quest XI looks like a uh, good old Dragon Quest game, and I am a very excited to check it out. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, RPG makers, you and I gotta talk. It's been a long time coming, didn't want to say anything, but we have to have this chat now. It's important. Okay, now, you're all great, you make great, fun, wonderful video games, so it breaks my heart to have to tell you this. But the whole silent protagonist thing doesn't work anymore. Stop doing it. Some people might like that. I don't care. I'm not some people. I don't like it, so you should stop. That's the way this works. Back in the original Dragon Quest games for the NES, you played the hero. Now, you were notable in a sense. Um, I think the first game you were just random dude the hero. Um, and then in the next game you were descendants of, of that hero. And then in the third game you were um, Erdurk, which I think was a, like a title bestowed upon. You, you were the the old hero that you had spent the last two games hearing about. Um, in the fourth game, you played all of the, the side characters who had names and personalities until you got to the fifth chapter where you played the hero. But it worked back then because there was no voiced dialogue. It was all little chibi sprites. There was no emotion in the characters' faces, so we had to infer the character's personality through their actions and how uh, the non-player characters responded to them. Back in the NES days, that worked. Starting with at least uh, Dragon Quest VIII on the PlayStation 2, it doesn't work anymore. You can't have a nameless personality-free character who doesn't react to the world around them beyond nods and grunts. It's weird. It doesn't work. It's off-putting. It makes the main character seem like they genuinely don't give a shit about anything that's actually happening or any of the people they're spending time with. Oh, he and no one ever addresses them by the name because you allow... Uh, people to uh, it, allow us players to name the character. So they have to refer to us as, hey, you, or hero, or dude bro. 
back in the NES days, you just entered the name in the, you know, you just had a variable for character name, and it would just say, hello, Andrew, or asswipe, or whatever you put in for the character's name. These days, since it's all voiced, you can't do that, so they have to bend over backwards not to actually say your name. And you have all of these scenes where people will ask you a question, and the character will... You just said stuff. And it's, oh, stop doing that. It's terrible. It sucks. Where exactly is it that you hail from? I would so very much like to pay tribute to those who took you in and raised you. I see. Which RPG protagonist do you remember most? Do you have more fondness of? Shulk? in Xenoblade Chronicles, or random create a character dude or dudette from Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah, it's Shulk, someone with actual dialogue and personality and emotion and reactions to the world around him. Dragon Quest XI, like so many fully voiced, fully animated uh, 3D RPGs these days, Stars a protagonist who you can name, so no one can ever actually refer to him by name, and as emotive and expressive and full of personality as every other character in this entire world is, your character is just nothing. There is nothing going on here. One plate of delicious gruel for the gentleman in the dungeon suite. Come and get it! <laughs> Your character does not seem to... You see... When it doesn't work in the full 3D, full animated thing, you, you can't infer anything because they're standing there like a lump. Like they don't care about anything that's happening or anyone that it's happening to. The Luminary, you're serious? Things are getting pretty hairy up ahead. You'd better take this. Oh, and I found this in a corner over there. I guess it's your stuff, right? Me? I got this little beauty back, so now I'm pretty much unstoppable. We better get out of here before any more of our tin-headed friends come knocking. Hollow, when you're ready to move out, okay? As I said, all the, the most you'll get out of them is a grunt and or a nod. The sewers, huh? Well, there must be a way out somewhere. Lead the way. I got your back. Let's do this. I believe in you. I believe in the Luminary. I don't have much choice. Stop doing that! It sucks! I really like Dragon Quest XI, by the way. I'm, I'm, I've spent the last... Uh five minutes complaining about this because I feel it's really important and hurts the game. And when you hurt a game that I like, it hurts me. Why do you want to hurt me, Square Enix? Why do you want to hurt me? So please stop doing that. Give your character a name. Give your character a voice. Give your character a personality. Please. It's a role-playing game. I expect to role-play. You don't have to have this blank damn cipher. It, I know you think, it. well, we do that so you can insert yourself into the world and be you. Well, that character is not me. Even I emote more than that. And that's saying something. I, personally, would much prefer a an actual character with personality and voice and name. It's okay. Again, it's a role-playing game. 
we players of role-playing games are okay playing a role. Give us a role to play. Because you can't infer, you can't pretend what your character's actually saying or how your character's actually reacting like you can in the original NES games. The reason you can't do that is because your character's not doing that. Your character is very clearly just standing there stone-faced. Hey, Mac, thanks so much for saving my life. That sure was swell of you. I bet you want to go back to your hometown now because the king sent his army there and is probably going to kill all of your friends and family and everyone you ever knew and loved. So it's probably really important to you. There's a fire burning inside you to get up off our asses and get home to save your friends and family. Mm. So that's not so good. The rest of the game's pretty great, though. I love the art style, the Kira Toriyama's um, uh, uh, aesthetic for character design I have always been a huge fan of. Um, it's lovely. Uh, which is funny, because I don't like Dragon Ball at all from a character design perspective. I think it's terrible, but I, I've always loved the Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior uh, series. Um, so, nothing terribly new plot-wise. So, you are the Chosen One, the Luminary, whatever. We're not really certain what that means. But the King of Kingsville uh, seems to think that's really bad. His, his perspective is, look, you know, you can't have light without darkness. And so, if we've got a Luminary, we've got the Demon Lord. So, we're going to throw you in the dungeon and kill your family. I would think, you know, kill the Luminary and that ends the Demon Lord. I don't know what killing his whole family has to do with anything or why you're going to throw him in dungeon, but eh, whatever. It would be a very short game if they just offed your character immediately. So, uh, you and your bestest buddy, who is just your bestest buddy, but because you don't emote or talk, you really don't seem to give the slightest shit about her at all. Um, she's like, oh, I'm so excited to be doing this with you. <laughs> stop, please, RPG makers, I, I implore you, stop doing this. It's so terrible. Um, but, uh, I played this for three and a half hours and I got to, uh, escape the dungeon, uh, got a one, uh, new member of my party, and you might be thinking, why, Andrew, did that take you three and a half hours? That's like the very, very, very beginning of a very long game. And it's because I'm one of those RPG gamers who has to search every square inch of the map and pick up everything off the floor and talk to every single person in every single town, both at night and during the day, because they'll say different things. Um, I take a really long time to play these games. Um, that's just how I play them. So, um, but it's, it's very fun, comfortable RPG goodness. Uh, this game, like most games, starts out with the, the camera controls the wrong way, so I have to switch it to inverted controls, which is the correct way to operate a camera. I, I'm not sure why video games always default it to what they call normal, because it's just weird and unnatural, and nobody... Nobody likes it. So the the vertical camera control should always be inverted because that's correct, you see. Um, but that wasn't too bad. Had to up the camera speed because it was, you know, panning a bit slow. Um, I, there were a couple menu options that took me a little while to figure out. At first I thought... Uh, this game had broken series tradition and was just going to auto-control your party members. I finally found where you can... Me, personally, I like choosing the actions that every member of my party take. And you can do that. It doesn't default to that. So you, you have to go into the initial tactics menu and turn that off um, per character. 
uh, there's uh, uh, there's a real nice quality of life improvement that I don't think was in the last game, or at least not in eight, not that I remember. And that's uh, the 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 names that appear over the enemies' heads um, turn orange and then a real orangish red color as they get damaged to signify which which enemies are low on health. That's a nice little visual shortcut. I like that. Um, the uh, map actually shows you where all of the glowy bits are that you can pick up, which I wasn't expecting, but, you know, hey, um, saves me a little bit of time from scouring every square inch of the map if I already know where they are. Um, got to, I, I love the, I, I've always loved the, uh, the Akira Toriyama designs, but I also love the, the character names. Um, I'm... I'll show a picture of one of them. Stark Raven, that's one of them. <laughs> the Stark Raven. It, they're, they're mostly puns like that. I, I love that. Um, there's When you escape the uh, the dungeon, there there's this really crappy stealth section, which I, I don't mind the stealth section, but they, they play it really weird where every single time your companion will show you how to sneak by and then you have to mirror it. I don't know why they did that. It's like, yeah. because if you screw it up, you just end up fighting the dudes, which, so. And then you fall down a hole, and then a, you find a dragon, and it's like, oh no, a dragon will eat us, run! And it does a whole Crash Bandicoot thing, where you run towards the camera with the dragon chasing behind you, but there's, it's just hold down on the control stick, there's nothing to jump over, nothing to dodge, it's kind of weird. Although I do love the juxtaposition of this giant, menacing, fire-breathing dragon that's also super cute. I love that. Um, uh, there's a new move called Pep Something, um, which is... Uh, uh, what did they call it in the earlier games? They called it uh, Tension, I think. So if you get hit a bunch, you get pepped up and you start hitting harder. Well, if you have at least two people in your party and you're both pepped at the same time, you can do a team attack. Uh, so that's a new thing for this series, at least. Uh, I did one of them, which was cool, and that's where I shut the game off, because I was... It's one of those games where there's constantly one more thing to do. It's like, okay, I need to take a break because I'm starving to death, or, or my bladder is about to burst, or... I'm late for work or something like that, and I was like, "Ah, oh, let me let me just go over this one hill and see what's up there. Oh, let me let me just go into this town and see what's there. Oh, I, I, I just let me just complete this one quest and then, okay, I completed the quest, but let me just let me just run the goods back to the quest giver so I can get my rewards. It's it's always one of those things. It's one of those games that's constantly just 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 one more thing. The the Columboization of video games. Always just one more thing." Um, uh, the, if you're not familiar with the tropes of classic RPGs like this, and you watched me play it, someone who's very slow and talks to everybody and searches every cabinet and drawer and smashes every pot, it would probably drive you nuts watching me play. You, you'd say, oh my god, this game is slow. And I do think the, the opening of this particular game is a bit more leisurely paced than some others, but I don't mind it. I, I've been to two towns so far, the opening cobblestone or whatever it's called, the nice little um, uh, farm town that has horses that you can pet, and that's great. Uh, there, there, there's a, you can pet the horses. Um, and then the, the main uh, castle town that you go to and then get thrown in the dungeon, uh, they're just they're, they're really big, and the set decoration is nice. Uh, there, there's lots of little things on shelves and stuff. It does do that weird thing that I was complaining about in Neo, where some of the uh, scenery, specifically pumpkins <laughs> and some uh, wooden barrels, just explode into bits when you walk near them. I don't know why, 
Uh, there are some things, that, there are some pots and some barrels that you can pick up and smash to see if there are goodies inside. Um, but pumpkins, especially pumpkins, don't know why pumpkins, um, and some barrels just explode when you walk near them. I, I, again, th that doesn't hurt the game any, it's just some weird thing that I noticed. Um, there's all kinds of little cool things uh, that, that you'll notice, like I saw a well outside of a church and I inspected it and you could climb down and there's a series of uh, caves down there and some goodies to collect. Uh, so th there's, it's a wonderful game just to get lost in and just explore things and see what's there. Uh, the enemies are cute. Um, so far the combat system is exactly what I expect, but I'm early game yet, so there's not really any strategy. It's just, just hit, just hit the enemies. Uh, no, they're not doing status effects yet. I've got two spells. I've got Frizz, which is a fireball, and Heal, which is exactly what it sounds like. And I haven't... I haven't even cast a spell yet. I haven't needed to. Um, one thing that Dragon Quest started in I, 8, at least, I, I didn't play 5 through 7 because they moved from the uh, NES onto the PlayStation. I didn't have a PlayStation back then, so I, I never played them. But I do know, at least in 8, they started doing these um, uh, skill tree type of things for uh, each character. And what bothers me is you can't complete the skill tree in a single playthrough. I think you could do it if you played through the game at least a second time, but I, I don't... So, so you have to be real careful about how you spend your skill points and which branch of the skill tree you want to go down. And I'm, I'm actually not... I don't know if you can back out and go down another one. Would be nice if you can. I, I don't know if that's a possibility or not. But I don't care for that. I, I like I like it where you level up and it says you just earned a new spell. We oui, that that's fine. I don't mind skill trees as long as I can in a single playthrough fill out the skill tree. That's just that's my style. I, I don't like not being able to do things, and I'm not going to play the game twice, especially really really long games like you know Dragon Quest RPGs. Um, uh, do I want to say anything more about this game? It, it's incredibly cute. It's incredibly charming. I, I do love all the characters. Eric, the first party member, his voice actor is not doing it for me. Everyone else is really adorable, though. Um, and your character is a boring mute who who comes across as just completely apathetic. Don't forget us, will you? Take care. And remember, we'll be waiting for you. Like, seriously, he, he goes to the king because his mama said, Hey, you've got that mark of, of, you know, the one on your hand, so you should go to the king and talk to him. So you go to the king, and the king's like, Ha, ah, you are the demon spawn, and I'm going to raise your, you know, level your entire town and kill everyone you love. And your character just... Just nothing. Nothing. Just kind of stands there. Like, okay, whatever. Ah, stop doing that, RPG Maker. Seriously, your games would be so much better if the main character was a character, you see. Anyway, uh, I really like uh, Dragon Quest XI, uh, much as I expected it to, as I expected to. And I am going to eat because I'm starving to death, and then I'm probably going to play a little bit more this evening. So, goody goody gumdrops. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.